Welcome to Sakshi TV's special immigration talk show. I'm your host, Shivani Raj. For today, we have Mr. Srinivas Kaveti, who is a lawyer from Kaveti Law Firm. Uh, please know that Sakshi TV now has four immigration shows every week on Tuesdays with lawyer Srinivas Kaveti, on Wednesdays with Prashanti Reddy, on Thursdays with, uh, with Parvat Nini, and on Fridays with Banu Ninda. Please tune in to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, Please email us at usasakshi.com or call us at 8667257441. Before we begin the show, please note that the information provided on the show is not a legal advice and for general informational purposes only. Sakshi TV or its agents will not be responsible for the use of information. If you need any specific legal advice, you can contact the lawyer directly. Mr. Kaveti needs no introduction, but if you need any consultation, you can definitely log on to their law firm, which is Kaveti Law Firm. It is headquartered in New York City and ha it has been a number one choice to all of their clients for its top-notch ways of dealing with the U.S. immigration laws. So without any further delay, let's welcome Mr. Kaveti Garu onto our show. Mr. Kaveti, welcome back. How are you? Uh, good, thank you, um, Shivani. Yes. Uh, so, Kaveti Garu, today we are uh, talking a little bit about, you know, the U.S. lottery uh, frauds that usually happen. But before we get on to the topic, let's get to the beginning. And uh, I, my first question to you is, what exactly is an H-1B uh, process and a U.S. H-1B lottery? H-1B is uh, uh, for the, you know, it's an, it's an employment non-immigrant visa initially issued for three years, and uh, it can be extended for another three years. Um, most of the time, you know, our guys, Indian guys, they're more familiar with this H-1B program for technology workers. But uh, this is not only limited for technology workers. It extends to the engineers, um, you know, doctors, lawyers, accountants, and pharmacists and different uh, Specialized occupations, that is the term which is used in the immigration law. Uh, anybody who has a bachelor's and master's and uh, the job is uh, complex and it's a specialized, they can get an H-1B coming to U.S. to work for a U.S. employer uh, for an initial period of three years. And it can be extended for another three years. Uh, and it's also called a, a dual intent visa. What does it mean? you might have an interest in settling in America, or if your employment is not extended, you might even go back. So that's called H-1B. Yes. Uh, so let's get on to uh, the lottery system, uh, Mr. Kaveti. You you know, uh, there are a lot of fraud cases that happen uh, during the lottery. Is First of all, is it really true? And what happens in this process? See, what has happened, um, Shivani, in the past, this H-1B program has become famous, uh, very popular for past 30 years. I mean, mostly, you know, we heard of this H-1B from the time of Y2K in U.S. I mean, it became more prominent from 1990s, where the IT programmers, uh, they started coming to U.S. And the technology companies have, uh, you know, it was like a boom for the technology companies. And if you see the statistics in America, over 80% of IT companies are run by um, Indians. And um, and most of uh, Indians, they consume the H-1B, that is by the technology workers and by the tech companies. I mean, if you see almost all companies, if you see Microsoft, Google, and uh, Apple, and even Facebook, a lot of companies, the, uh, the CEOs and uh, uh, chief uh, information officers they're all Indians. I mean, if you see Google also, you know that, you know. So most of the, um, you know, employees, uh, technology workers are from primarily from India. Why is that? Uh, because uh, of two reasons. One is uh, because uh, Indians are uh, very good in English language. And two, they're very good in mathematics. And number three, if you see in the world, um, India produces largest IT professionals and engineers, we have more engineering colleges and technology schools than anywhere in the world. So, you know, people uh, from that uh, side of the world, 
have been coming to U.S. Uh, to get their jobs and, you know, work and get their green cards. So what has happened uh, lately, because uh, people are coming to U.S. on a student visa, on an F1, and um, the, the immigration has made some changes to accommodate the students uh, on a CPT curriculum practical training and OPTs as well, occupational training. Uh, they were allowed to take employment in technology industries. And uh, there are more people coming to U.S. And they made a quota of 60,000 and 20,000 for master's graduates and 40,000 for non-master's um, graduates. That means um, this 60,000 uh, people are competing all over the world. I mean, mostly 80, 85 percent there from India. They're competing with that uh, 40,000 uh, visas available which is a quota system before it was not there. Um, you know, they have introduced this quota system a few years ago. And even for that quota, for example, for 40,000 jobs and for 30,000, sorry, 20,000 master's graduates, there are hundreds and hundreds of thousands of students are coming every year to U.S. So when these kids are coming and they're graduating, they all are competing against each other to get H-1Bs for within this 20,000 uh, people, the, for the master's graduates, and 40,000 for a non-master's or people, it's like an open quota. So the immigration said, okay, let's uh, have a lottery. That means it's a demand and supply. There is more supply and there's less demand. That means the requirement is only 60,000 they made. And uh, there are more supply, there are more students and more employees from all over the world. Uh, IT workers, they want to come. So it's a basically a demand and supply. So they said, let's have a lottery. Let's luck, you know, let's let's see who is lucky in a lottery system. So if in a few years, they introduced the lottery system and whoever gets picked up and they will, uh, you know, be meeting the 40,000 quota and 20,000 quota. So what has happened uh, recently, because there are certain lacunas and loopholes, I guess, in the law, so what this consulting companies they started doing and the employees started doing is, um, you know, they were allowed to uh, only apply for one, um, you know, a lottery in one job, one selection, um, you know. But what they've been doing, these employers, they're uh, corroborating with other employers and they're trying to apply from different uh, companies. That means one employee, one consultant or one graduate is applying from multiple companies. Uh, and not only one or two, um, I've heard that one kid has applied from 100 companies. So it's only $10. So he has uh, uh, taken advantage of applying with 100 companies. Like that, many employers, they were uh, corroborating with other companies. And sometimes each employer is even registering two to three companies from the same premises and they're using the same computer, same IP address, and they're applying this consultant from three different companies, four different companies. And sometimes they're also having their own cousins or relative companies, they were applying. So what is happening is the genuine guy who applies only from one company, he's not getting picked up. And this guy who has applied from multiple companies, they're getting picked up. It's a probability. See, lottery is nothing but a probability. If you are having more um, numbers, if you are applying from different companies, so your success is more high, probability is more. It's just a statistics. So these guys who are getting picked up from multiple employers. So the genuine guys who deserve are not getting picked up. So there is a disparity. That means the immigration says this is an H-1B abuse. You're abusing the system. And two, you're committing fraud because uh, there is an employer attestation and the employee has to disclose to the employer saying, hey, I'm only applying from this company. So the employer, if he's having a knowledge that uh, the employee is filing from different companies, the employer is committing a fraud on the immigration and he's doing misrepresentation and he's also committing a perjury, which is they're all felonies for the employer. So this is the H-1B fraud and H-1B abuse. It's a serious thing. So the immigration discovered for the past two, three years that uh, people are, more people are applying. 
means same guys are applying for multiple companies. So that's what the H-1B abuse and H-1B fraud. They discovered it from a couple of years, immigration, and they're taking measures, they're investigating. Yes. Uh, so Mr. Kaviti, uh, you, um, you know, how exactly is a fraud, um, you know, noticed or how exactly is it discovered? And also you being a lawyer yourself for so many years and you now own a, you also own a law firm at this point. So uh, how did you personally realize that, no, there is fraud happening in the H-1B lottery too? No, it is not, Shivani. It's not my observation. It's the USCIS as, uh, you know, they have briefed in uh, media and uh, and a lot of lawyers are also speaking about that and a lot of newspapers have been uh, covering it's a known secret, a secret, all the IT companies, they know it. And uh, consultants, IT, IT consultants and students also, they know it. It's a known truth. Uh, it's not that I only discovered. It's already there in the media. Uh, what is happening is because if you see, um, you know, the genuine guys are not getting picked up. And if you see from last two years, last year was only, I think, uh, you know, four um, lakhs or something and this year it went about seven lakhs. So every year, the more number of people are applying uh, and more applications they're receiving. Of course, the employers are paying $10 for that, for registering it in selection. But when the immigration has discovered from last two years, the same candidate is applying for multiple companies. What they've been doing, uh, they have been denying the H1s when they file. And two, they're even revoking the visas even after working for one year or when they go to the embassy. So it's a it's a it's a no-no because immigration fraud and committing a fraud, misrepresenting to the federal government, lying on oath, these are all serious felonies, uh, Shivani. Uh, what is the meaning of felony? It's a more than one year jail term. And in the past, if you see, because our law firm has been uh, you know, doing H1s, uh, you know, and uh, labor certifications and green cards for more than 22 years in Manhattan. And we, our firm has advised, uh, uh, you know, Ramsey and Associates, our firm has advised many, many clients and our firm has handled many clients in such scenarios that, uh, you know, a lot of employees were in trouble, a lot of employees have been in trouble. Our firm has some immigration litigation lawyers, attorneys, those who have represented these employers and employees. So it's not an easy thing because there are financial penalties. Um, the, the, the government has confiscated their properties and uh, they have uh, penalized a lot of employers. And in the past, many lawyers also went to jail because who were uh, part of the conspiracy and a lot of uh, CPS went to jail, a lot of uh, CFOs, you know, Chief financial officers went to jail and a lot of IT consultants and employers went to jail in the past. If you Google in, um, you know, that uh, how many companies have been and a lot of companies uh, every year, the Department of Labor and the immigration also disqualifies the employers. That means it's not only just penalizing the CEOs and CFOs and the attorneys and um, the uh, CFOs means uh, the chartered accountants. CPS, Certified Public Accountants, but they also disqualify a lot of corporations. And there are a lot of, uh, um, uh, uh, you can find out the list of them from the Department of Labor website. And a lot of uh, these uh, consultants, and there are a lot of these watchdogs, there are some groups, they also disclosed it, mentioned it in online. So it's not um, that I discovered, it's there already. So, you know, it's, it's in the media and uh, one has to be careful and it's not, you know, you, you can't be sitting in America and uh, opening up a company and doing whatever you want, not complying the law and uh, applying for multiple companies and charging uh, as, uh, these guys, uh, taking money from these guys and uh, you know, filing multiple applications, making a false attestation and uh, misrepresenting, committing fraud. These are all felonies. I mean, they are criminally liable and they are initiating criminal prosecution, federal prosecution, wire fraud. Um, these are serious things, uh, Shivani. It's not just immigration fraud. It is also a criminal fraud. That means these are uh, you're committing a fraud as against a sovereign, as against 
US government, which is immigration and Department of Labor and other agencies. This is a very, very serious thing in this country. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Kaviti, are you saying that uh, this is not just like a normal immigration fraud that they're doing, but you, that the consequences will be as serious as a criminal law uh, when if they, these kind of uh, issues are uh, being found? Absolutely, yes. You're right there. You're hitting the nail. Because it's not just an immigration fraud. In immigration law, the immigration fraud, they have uh, the penal, they have stipulated the penalties. And uh, if you have intentionally committed immigration fraud, uh, there is a jail term uh, because immigration law is a federal law. But what is happening in the country, because the companies are running businesses in different states, there is interstate uh, fraud. That means you're committing fraud on different states and you're committing fraud on federal government. And you're also um, committing uh, misrepresentation. You're doing uh, uh, perjury, lying on oath, and you're concealing certain material facts. And uh, you're breaching not only immigration fraud, you're also committing criminal fraud in this country. And these are all felonies. They are criminally prosecuting them. And that means you'll end up, jail, you'll end up in jail for 20, 25 years. And uh, these uh, kids, these students, and these IT consultants, they think you know they can read on the blogs and they can escape. No, they could be arrested. You know, uh, people their visas could be uh, revoked. They could be denied visas. They will be sent back to um, their own home countries after uh, serving sentence in the prison. So these are criminal prosecutions. These are not just immigration fraud. Not. Uh, deny your visa, send you back into your home country. No, 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 no. This is a serious thing. I mean, you know, a lot of lawyers are also giving uh, interviews on this subject, uh, Shivani. And, uh, you know, I've also witnessed a few lawyers who spoke very well on this area. And uh, these IT consultants and IT programmers and these IT consulting companies who are owners, they, most of them are IT consultants. Once they get a green card, they manage the management uh, of these uh, project managers and you know, they think it's just a joke and they do all sorts of crim criminal behaviorism and they end up in jails. A lot of IT consulting companies in the past, which I have heard and I met them, uh, more than 100 to 200 people went to jail in 20 years. They went to federal jail and I've, I've, I know them, some of them personally. So it's not just they break your, they, they just uh, cancel your visa and send you home. No, 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 no. This is a serious thing. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Kaviti, how many uh, lottery applications were given uh, to the USCIS this year and uh, the previous year? I think uh, more than um, 700,000. Exactly, you know, there's a number I need to look into it and say. And about, I think, 400,000 last year. There was a high jump from last year to this year. Uh, I'm not exactly sure the numbers. I can, you know, I can look into my notes and say. And the two, um, you know, there's a big number jump from last year to this year. Immigration also started uh, uh, finding, you know why? Because if you see uh, in America now, a lot of people are losing their jobs. And uh, all the media companies in the world are saying that America is facing, uh, you know, a recession and uh, people are being laying off. And if you see um, some media guys are also make sh making shows the three banks have bursted out in America. They've gone to bankruptcy. So, I mean, you know, one side, the whole world is saying that, you know, America is going through a recession and everything. The other side, more number of people are coming and applying. And the other most important key factor, Shivani, in this is when the consulting companies are filing, when they're making an application in lottery process, they should have a bona fide job offer. In this attestation, what is the meaning of bona fide job offer? A lot of consulting company owners should understand that means you have a job in your office or you have a job in your company that you can give a job to these guys. What many IT consulting companies are doing, they don't have jobs, but they are paying 50 to 100 applications. That means you don't have a bona fide job offer. But when you're making an attestation, that means you're saying the immigration that you have a job. Do you have 100 job applications? Do you have 100 jobs? The answer is no. Once these guys are picked up, they're going and looking for jobs outside. 
That's unlawful. The law says if, at the time of filing an application online, you need to attest saying that you have a bona fide job offer and you're able and willing. That means you have finances. You have some projects going on. And most of the employers don't have jobs. Then that itself is unlawful. That means you're not coming with the clean hands. You're lying to the government. They could be penalized with that as well. Employers, they could get in trouble. So let's talk about the H-1B fraud indicators. What, according to you, are uh, the number one fraud indicators that uh, the lawyers, the attorneys, and also the people who are applying for the H-1B must, you know, uh, probably, you know, get an idea about? Most of the times, it's a very broad um, area, Shivani. Um, H-1B fraud means it's a very broad area. I mean, it starts with, um, you know, prevailing wages. And most of the times when people are working, you know, they're not getting paid equal um, salary uh, from the other employee who has similar uh, background and similar experience in education. If you see the green card holders and citizens, they get paid higher and the non-immigrant workers you get paid lower. And uh, second thing, the job duties, you know, um, you know, there's a lot of students there. Um, they don't have no work experience. You know, a lot of this IT consulting uh, companies are cooking up their resume, saying that they have six years and seven years experience. In fact, they just graduated and uh, they're competing with the local U.S. workers and the local U.S. workers who have six years, seven years of experience. And these kids with 23, 24 years, young kids. And they're showing that they have six years, seven, seven years experience. And uh, you're taking away the job of a U.S. worker who really has six, seven years of ex work years, years of work experience. But the student don't have. And they're doing all sorts of fraud. They're doing a mocking interviews and somebody else is appearing and somebody else is working. And, you know, those things are all H-1B fraud. And two, LCA violations. And you were saying that um, you have a client. In fact, you don't have a client. And uh, you say that you have a work in your in-house. You don't have a work in-house. And you say that the guy is going to come and work in your office. You're developing some app, but you're not doing anything. You know, these are all LCA violations. And wherever you are, the company and wherever the employees, they're supposed to run the payroll in both the states. And you're supposed to take an LCA uh, for do, uh, different states. And they don't do it. And and many times, um, the uh, when the when the employer takes an LCA, this is a good information for the employees. Uh, a copy of LCA is supposed to be given to the employee, but how many companies they give copy of LCA to the employee? The answer is no. And um, uh, one is a wage violations, and two are the LCA violations, and uh, three uh, fraudulent education, fraudulent work experience, and um, four. You know, um, the terms and conditions, uh, for example, if you're working in one state and the terms and conditions have changed and uh, you're supposed to file an amendment, you don't do it. Uh, so that's another thing. So there are many, many um, areas of H-1B frauds are there. I mean, if you even look at this now, filing, filing multiple applications for different companies also constitutes H-1B fraud and H-1B abuse. And, um, you know, there are so many other things, you know. Sometimes uh, employers have committed uh, certain violations and sometimes the employees have committed certain violations. You don't disclose it to the immigration. You know, there are many, many factors. Discrimination is also there. One of it, you're discriminated. You know, a woman is paid less or a man is getting paid more. Depends upon race, depends upon work experience. And your job duties are, you're, you're performing a very high qualified job duties because you're an entrant in the job and the job duties you're handling are very complex and they are the com the job duties are of somebody who does 15, 20 years of experience, but you're only getting less paid. So that's also another H-1B fraud and abuse. Yes. Uh, so Mr. Uh, Kaviti, uh, what are some protection rights or what are some protection that the H-1B workers can expect uh, from the government uh, if these kind of frauds are actually happening? It's very scary if you say that because uh, the Department of Labor constituted in this country to protect the workers. I mean, if the H-1B employees or any employees are getting, you know, discriminated or they're getting less paid 
or they are not getting any medical leaves. For example, if the uh, if the woman they are pregnant, if they don't get uh, you know medical leave, or if they are being abused, you know sexual abuse or any type of abuse, you know they are not getting paid wages in time, and they are not getting paid uh, uh, you know prevailing wages as for the labor condition application. You know there and the employers are charging money on the employees for the H-1Bs and H-4s, not H-4s, I'm sorry, but labor certifications and green cards, you know, and uh, they're making all unlawful uh, deals with the employees. The employees have certain rights. They can report to the uh, wage and hour uh, department of labor. They can also report to the um, immigration. And there is an email address on the website of immigration. They get investigated. And there are some civil rights uh, you know, uh, remedies are also there. Uh, there are some occupational issues. You know, there are tons and tons of uh, protections for the employees in 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 uh, getting the H one B you know abuse. You know, for the employees. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Kavedi, you just said that there is uh, a kind of uh, discrimination that actually happens. So, on what basis are these uh, discriminations you know happening, and also? Um, does this only uh, work with uh, the H1B lottery fraud? Does that only happen with the technology companies or what? what's the deal with that? Well, I mean, if you see most of the time, I mean, we hear this. I mean, uh, I heard uh, from some clients, uh, those who are medical doctors, and um, they say that uh, I have come across and uh, our firm has advised certain clients, those are medical doctors, they get discriminated based on your nationality or based on your religion or based on your even color. Uh, they they said that uh, to us that uh, they get discriminated because during the residency program and uh, there are certain uh, um, employees in certain industries, they get promoted and they don't, some people don't get promoted because of their color or because of their attitudes, because of their background sometimes you know, many factors, they get discriminated, you know, even in pharmaceutical industry as well. Yes. So I think uh, we have covered a majority of uh, the topic, but again, uh, if there's anything, we can definitely uh, continue with the next episode. But again, thank you, Mr. Kaviti Garu, for tuning on to our show. We had an amazing show. Uh, thank you to the viewers for tuning in. You're watching Sakshi TV with me, Shivani Raj. Thank you, Shivani.